Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Ah, uh, another night of 1980s trick-or-treating. We're going back to a time when candy corn was currency and parents regulated their children's sugar intake by binging all the fun-sized candy bars near the garbage. Ah, <sighs> it was a simpler time. Anyway, speaking of regulating sugar, we're going to look at two very important pancreatic hormones involved in the regulation of blood glucose in addition to insulin, glucagon and somatostatin. Be sure to check out the insulin sketch, too, for the full picture of blood glucose regulation. Like insulin, glucagon and somatostatin are both produced by specific cells in the islets of Langerhans, which is why Langerhansel is here at the very front of the sketch. He sure looks scrumptious. Like, possibly good enough to eat? Or at least this witch spicing up her pot with glucagon sugar-free sweetener seems to think so. And did you notice that ladle is suspiciously alpha-shaped? Well, glucagon is a peptide hormone produced in the alpha cells of the islets of Langerhans. This is in contrast to insulin and somatostatin, which are produced by beta cells and delta cells, respectively. Now, when you hear blood sugar regulation, you might instantly think of insulin, which is released in response to high blood glucose levels. But glucagon is equally important. It's released from alpha cells in response to low blood glucose levels to get them back in normal range. In other words, its actions directly oppose those of insulins. You can remember glucagon is released when blood sugar is low with these sugary candies all over the ground. Better luck next year, kid. But low blood glucose isn't the only thing that stimulates glucagon release. A couple digestive hormones, gastrin and cholecystokinin, or CCK, also trigger its secretion. This cockroach trying to get grubby little legs on some Halloween treats is here for CCK, while gastrin is represented by this gas can. All right, now let's take a closer look at how glucagon raises blood sugar. Glucagon initiates two distinct processes that raise blood glucose levels glycogenolysis, and gluconeogenesis. And see the liver-shaped door? Both of these pathways occur primarily in liver cells. First up, glycogenolysis, which is symbolized by this fairy cowboy lysing cotton candy, our recurring symbol for glycogen. If you recall, glucose is stored in the liver as glycogen, a highly branched molecule consisting of repeating glucose monomers. When glucagon is released, glycogen gets broken down into glucose through a series of enzymatic reactions. Glucose then makes its way out of liver cells into the bloodstream and voila, increased blood sugar levels. Then there's gluconeogenesis, which is symbolized by these bags of candy. But not just any candy, candy from Davy Jones's Candy Locker, whose trademark slogan is We'll make candy out of anything. Okay, so number one, gross. And two, gluconeogenesis doesn't exactly make glucose out of anything, but it does generate glucose from non-carbohydrate sources, like proteins and lipids. And that does it for glucagon. Let's finish up with somatostatin. Wow. This kid sure likes streetwear. He's dressed as a stop sign with a delta cone hat to represent somatostatin, a peptide hormone made in the delta cells of the islets of Langerhans. Delta cells make up about 5% of pancreatic islet cells, so somatostatin production is lower than that of insulin and glucagon. Somatostatin inhibits both insulin and glucagon function, which is why this inside mat our symbol for insulin, has been trashed by our stop sign friend. And it looks like Mr. Hinkleberg gave out glucagon cough drops for a third year in a row. Ugh, I'd throw those out too. Somatostatin actually inhibits a wide range of hormones from the pancreas, hypothalamus, and pituitary gland, 
including some heavy hitters like growth hormone. Somatostatin also plays a role in nervous and digestive system functions. Speaking of which, let's check what we've covered before somatostatin shuts this whole thing down. Glucagon is made by alpha cells in the islets of Langerhans and is released in response to low blood glucose to bring those levels back up. CCK and gastrin stimulate the release of glucagon too. Glucagon targets cells in the liver to release stored glucose via glycogenolysis and produce glucose from non-carbohydrate molecules via gluconeogenesis. Somatostatin is made by delta cells in the islets of Langerhans. It inhibits both insulin and glucagon along with several other hormones and functions in the nervous and digestive systems. Alright, that's it for glucagon and somatostatin. I'll see you next time with- Wait! Stop sign kid! Don't! <laughs>